Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for honoring our invitation this morning. Let me take the advantage and express our gratitude to TV3. We are extremely grateful to your management, especially because uh, this matter we are discussing today is a public interest matter. And it is only institutions that are of interest and have interest of this country that will be interested in discussing public interest matter. Distinguished speakers here, invited participants, colleagues, media persons present, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of myself, the staff of Nature and Development Foundation, it is my pleasure to extend a warm felicitation and warm welcome to all stakeholders to this forum on the team Galamse fight beyond the talk, what is next? Ladies and gentlemen, exactly a year ago, uh, Nature and Development Foundation, in collaboration with Arocha, Wacom, and Osfam organized a stakeholder engagement at Alisa Hotel. In that forum, we brought your attention about the fact that there's a legal regime for mining in forest reserves. In fact, it shocked a lot of us. That law is called Environmental Protection Mining in Forest Reserve Regulation 2022, LI 2462. We call it infamous law infamous law because, in our opinion, it's a bad law. We further brought your attention that after 2022, that's November 2022, there was unprecedented rush, indeed a mad rush for leases and prospecting licenses in forest reserves. Indeed, the Kakum National Park, as of that time, was one of the candidates for its reserve under consideration. Likely, after that event, it was quickly deleted from the Mineral Commission's website. Well, we haven't seen mining going on there, and then we hope that that story about Kakum is dead and that. There's no longer mining going to go on in, in Kakum National Park. Ladies and gentlemen, subsequently, we didn't go to sleep. Subsequently, after that event, we wrote a number of petitions and engaged a number of people. In fact, we wrote a petition to the president, to the Speaker of Parliament, to the Minister of Environment, Science and Technology, to the Minister of forestry and natural resources, and to the diplomatic community that LI 2462 ought not to come into being. And that once it has come, it is our civic responsibility that that law must be repealed immediately. And then we say, we say so for a number of reasons that LI 2462 is a reversal of all our international commitments for sustainable forest management, for conservation, for climate change, for every public policy we have actually put in place to ensure that we have a green space, a green environment in this country. Because just imagine that Every forest reserve in this country is a candidate mining site. 
It is unbelievable. At the time last year, there were eight mining reserves which were which were granted mining leases. I mean, mining leases were granted in eight mining reserves already at the time last year. Fourteen were being considered for prospecting and and and, and then being evaluated for further mining leases. In fact, on the Mineral Commission website, there has no been further indication of increase in terms of the numbers. But what we know is that a lot more is going on than are being reported under the Mineral, Mineral Commission's website. For example, we know of the Bui National Park. There are currently three applications standing there and the Bui National Park for prospecting. Bui National Park, okay, so don't be surprised if the Moli National Park is granted for prospecting or mining licenses. It's actually crazy. And again, we say so because as recent as the 12th of September 2024, the the Ghana Institute of Foresters, which is a professional body comprising of foresters, majority of whom comes from the Forestry Commission, indicated that 37 forest reserves so far have been impacted by illegal mining. In fact, they indicate that some of them have been heavily destroyed beyond recognition as forest reserves. And some of these include the Apamprama Forest Reserve the Oda River Forest Reserve, Subin Shelter Bed Forest Reserve, Asinanyon Forest Reserve. Uh, and then some of them indeed have become no-go area. A no-go area in the sense that the people who are mining, they are so heavily mined that the forest guard or whoever is coming from forestry is even afraid to go into the forest. You can imagine. So the landlord has been overthrown. The squatters have now become the new landlords. So we believe that this issue is going out of hand. And, and a lot of professional bodies and groupings think that the issue of illegal mining, mining forests, is there, mining river, water bo uh, river bodies is, is a national security issue. And it has gone beyond the daily talk shop that we do. And so a group of us, civil society organization and individuals led by Arocha Ghana, we issue a writ this month against government to revoke LI 2462. That is for the court to consider our argument. And if the court agree with that, we think that that law was made contrary to procedure and substantive law requirement as enshrined in our laws in this country. Because we think that if that law is not taken off our books in the next few decades, and, and I dare say maybe just 10 years, even if it is too much, 10 years is too far, that we may never have anything called a natural forest. We probably will have plantations after we have done all the mining. We we'll try to put some semblance of trees there. And uh, that will look like in the savannah, but not a pure forest. That would be a madness for us. And so for us, we took the matter to court because that is in line with our shared commitment to the right to save and clean environment as enshrined in the Constitution and the protection of Ghana's natural resources for current and future generations. And, and then we think that posterity will judge us for the actions that we have taken. And so on that basis, I encourage each of us to take his little, to take action in his little way because the threat of, of money and illegal money generally it's no longer an option for us to sit down and wish that somebody else take an action. 
that we all have a responsibility as citizens, but more so as government. But the government acts based on what the citizens want. So maybe if we cry loud enough, government will hear us. But indeed, I've talked about the, some of the issues that I've, we have taken up because we are naturally dealing with issues of forest and not so much of water. But indeed, the connection between forest and water is so close because you need the forest to be there to maintain the water bodies. Indeed, there are so many forest reserves that have been named after water bodies because a lot of the waters take their source from the forest. Indeed, as ordinary people, what we see is that we see a water body. But that water body takes its source from somewhere. In fact, a few people actually know where the water comes from. And indeed, I, I say most of the times that we think that the water comes from the tap. Your water does not come from your tap. It comes from somewhere very far from your city. And if that water dries out, or if that water is polluted, your tap will not flow. So let's think about it. So talking about water and health, you know, we recently had the water, the Ghana Water Company threatening to shut down a number of their water processing facilities because of the elevated level of turbidity. I hear Ghana has the highest level of turbidity in some of our water bodies than anywhere in the world. That's embarrassing to say the least. But this is what we can all see. Perhaps if you fetch the water in a bottle, you will see that it's like a very creamy, uh, milky, you know, like some people want their, their milo. But what we cannot see with our naked eye is the heavily polluted, heavy metal pollution of the water. So the mercury and the lead and the arsenic in the water. In fact, when we even boil the water, I don't even know when you boil the water, does it take the mercury away? Okay. And we are very quick to think that the Ghana water is not clean. So the, the option is what? Pure water, sashi water. Where does the sashi water come from? Or the water in the sashi, where does it come from? Does our filtration system take away the heavy metals? I don't know. But maybe psychologically we think that we are safe by drinking sachet water. We are probably not safe. In fact, I'll ask more questions. What is the, the impact of the heavily polluted soils and the waters on our cocoa? I know this country has depended on cocoa for decades as one of the main sources of foreign exchange. This year, or maybe last cocoa season, our cocoa declined for about half of the previous year's yield. So from 800 to less than 500 metric ton. This year may not be different. The reason may not necessarily be all attributable to illegal money, but there's a contribution of illegal money to the cocoa problem. Because if the land is taken away, and we see on videos when people are clearing the cocoa to, plant, to, to do galamsey, I think those are frightening pictures we see. And if we leave it and say these are private people, they can use their land to do whatever they want to do, that's a shame. And as a country, if we don't take actions to encourage people and to put uh, measures in place for people to leave their cocoa on their land, uh, we will run into another ditch, but having nothing in respect to our cocoa. And the health implications. But most importantly, the rule of law and the national, sec national security implications of illegal, illegal mining in Galamsey. Before I take my seat, I want to, there was something I was reading about the constitution I found very interesting. It's, it's, it's one of the fundamental things 
about our constitution, I just want to read to you uh, Article 1, Clause 1. Uh, and I was just reflecting on it when I was driving. It says, the sovereignty of Ghana resides in the people of Ghana, in whose name and for whose welfare the powers of government are to be exercised in a manner and within the limits laid down in the constitution. I want to ask a question. Is the powers of government exercised with respect to Galamsey in legal mining in the interest and on behalf of the people? I don't know the answer, but your guess is as good as mine. Ladies and gentlemen, let me once again welcome you and to say that we are extremely grateful to have you here and to wish you a fruitful discussion and to hope that after this program, we are going to have an elevated level of the calls for government to take an immediate action. And this is in line with what TUC and all the professional bodies have issued. On that note, I welcome you once again. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mustafa Seydou, heads the Nature and Development Foundation, our partners and funders for this all-important conversation we're having.